In this video, I'd like to talk about the Sierpinski triangle. And this triangle, which is a fractal, is named after the Polish mathematician Sierpinski, who lived about 100 years ago. And you can see this triangle demonstrates the main property of fractals, self-similarity. Since if we look at, let's say, one of these smaller pieces, you can see the same basic shape as the entire triangle. Or if we look at, let's say, one of these smaller pieces, then each of these, again, look like the same basic shape of the overall triangle. And that's true as you zoom in. As you look at, let's say, smaller and smaller subsections of this, each of these subsections looks like the entire shape. And this triangle is formed by usually starting with an equilateral triangle and then splitting each of the sides in half. These are all the midpoints of the sides and forming new equilateral triangles by connecting those midpoints to each other. And then you will have these four equilateral triangles, one, two, three, four, and the middle one of these is then removed. And that process is then repeated. So let me clear these up a little bit. Then for each of the equilateral triangles that remain, you split them in half at their midpoints and create three new equilateral triangles, actually four, but the fourth one is then removed. And then this process is repeated to infinity. Essentially, every one of these equilateral triangles, you will then find the midpoints of each of these sides, connect lines to those midpoints, and then remove that middle equilateral triangle. And this fractal has many interesting properties, but let's get a better idea of how this works. So here is the graphic of how this triangle is created step by step. This is the starting point. We can call that step zero. Here is step one, two, three, and so on. But again, we're going to take each side length, find the midpoint, and from there we will connect each of these midpoints together with a line. And notice now we have four equilateral triangles where we will remove that middle one. And that will give us step one. And then from step one, we will repeat that process for each of these three remaining equilateral triangles. We will find the midpoints of each of these side lengths and then connect these points with a line. And again, you will end up with four equilateral triangles in each of these cases. And the middle equilateral triangles will be removed, which in this case, we are now removing three of them. So step two is the image after that process is completed. But like I mentioned, this process will be carried out infinitely many times. Let's just focus on one of these remaining equilateral triangles. We will find the midpoints of each of the side lengths and then connect them with lines. We now have four equilateral triangles and we will remove the middle one. So as this process is carried out towards infinity, you end up with this shape right here, which we call the Sierpinski triangle. And one of the interesting properties of this triangle is that after carrying this out to infinity, if we tried to find the area of this triangle, tried to calculate how much space the triangle takes up after all of these middle triangles were removed, we would find that the area is equal to zero. There is actually no area remaining. And remember that fractals have a dimension that is usually not a whole number. And remember with dimension that a line has dimension one, a square or something on the plane has dimension two, and so on, a cube would be dimension three. But the dimension of the Sierpinski triangle is approximately 1.585. And it's roughly between the dimension of a line and a square, but a little bit closer to the dimension of a square. Now, let's look at an animation of how 
this triangle is formed. And as you can see, the original triangle starts in red and then the black triangles are removed. Now we went through the process. It's all about finding these midpoints, connecting the lines and then removing the middle triangle. But this gives you an idea of how it is carried out step by step. And this is limited to around six or seven steps, but you can imagine that this process will carry out infinitely many times. And in the next video, we will look at how to calculate the dimension of the Sierpinski triangle.